Mining has been a driving force in the economic prosperity of Missouri for hundreds of years. The first commercial production of minerals was in 1715, and the first iron furnace west of the Mississippi River was established 100 years later in 1815. During the Civil War, numerous battles were fought to establish control of the rich mines in the Missouri Ozarks. During World War II, more than 70% of the nation's lead supply was produced from Missouri. And in addition to lead, tungsten was also an important commodity. Resource extraction has been an important part of the social fabric of the state and has generated a number of positive impacts, including high paying jobs, stimulation of local economies, and revenue for infrastructure, education, and recreation. However, with more than 300 years of mining activity, one can only imagine the environmental legacy that remains in some areas of our state. Missouri was founded in 1821 and no other economic activity, except farming, has been a part of Missouri's scene from its earliest beginnings. In addition to coal, other minerals were found and mines were developed to extract vast supplies of lead, zinc, copper, nickel, cobalt, limestone, clay, industrial sand, and barite. Missouri owes much of its historical growth and prosperity as a state to, to the success of mining industry. The Missouri Department of Natural Resources Land Reclamation Program was established in 1974 to regulate present mining operations. Staff with the Land Reclamation Program ensure mine land is returned to the best possible condition for use after mining is completed. Our program administers the state statutes, regulations, policies, and directives of the Missouri Mining Commission. Members are appointed by the governor. The state senate approves membership. The Metallic Minerals Waste Management Act became law in 1989. The act regulates disposal of waste from metallic minerals, mining, vinification, and processing. The cost for a permit to mine gold, silver, lead, copper, zinc, and iron in Missouri starts out at $10,000 with a minimum bond requirement of $20,000. There is also a renewal assessment of $7,500 that must be renewed every year until closure of the mine. Presently, there are 10 metallic mineral mine sites in Missouri. These sites consist of two inactive lead smelters and seven lead tailings areas and iron ore waste management area. Magmont Mine, owned by Tech American Incorporated, has exemplified excellent reclamation work of the metallic minerals tailings over a 20 year period. 26 million tons of lead, zinc, and copper ores were mined between 1968 and 1994, utilizing the room and pillar mining method. During operation, approximately 940,000 tons of tailings waste were generated by the milling process annually. These tailings were deposited in the on-site waste management area. Successful reclamation takes a long time and a strong commitment by the mining company, with closure planning now beginning when initial mine plans are developed. Here at Magmont, we began testing different types of vegetation years before we actually closed, so we'd have confidence in the reclamation. Missouri's Metallic Minerals Land Reclamation Program's reclamation requirements aligned very well with Tech's rigorous reclamation goals, which made for an overall very successful mine closure. Of course, we could not have implemented the closure of Magmont without the smart employees, consultants, and contractors that assisted us along the way. We still face some challenges in continuing to look after the Magmont property though. For example, we frequently have to repair damage caused by the local feral pigs, and we regularly inspect for and correct issues caused by fluctuating surface water and groundwater. Tech will continue to be a good Ozark neighbor even though our operations have ceased. We have a corporate sustainability commitment for our sites to keep the water clean, maintain long-term stability of our tailings impoundment, and promote biodiversity by helping nature return to the property. Revegetation efforts at the Magmont Mine have resulted in a diverse vegetation communities associated with aquatic habitats, isolated wetland areas, seasonal grassland habitats, and pioneer woodlands. Under the authority of the Land Reclamation Act, the Land Reclamation Program responsible for permitting actions, inspections, enforcement proceedings, and reclamation provisions of the mining laws. The act requires a post-mining restoration of land to a certain beneficial land use, including wildlife, development, agriculture, or water impoundment. 
There are about 800 industrial mineral mine sites located in Missouri. They range from one acre gravel bars to large limestone mining operations that have more than 1,000 acres affected by mining. Mining permits are issued for a one year period. They must be renewed annually until all bonded acres are released by the Missouri Mining Commission. Bonded acres are set at $8,000 for the first state acres, then $500 for each additional acre. Bonding is required only for open pit mining. There is no limit to the amount of mine sites an operator may place on one permit. The more acres permitted equates to a larger fee. We issue around 340 permit actions each year, conduct 475 inspections, and release approximately 1,000 bonded acres. Four environmental specialists do all of the permitting, inspections, and enforcement along with one unit chief. Sand and gravel mining has been taking place in Missouri for many years. One of the reasons it's still an option is because the Land Reclamation Program enforces regulations that protect Missouri's streams, both large and small. Some streams are better equipped than others to maintain their natural balance in the midst of sand and gravel mining. But how can you tell which stream is best for a sand and gravel mining operation? The Missouri Department of Conservation says the easiest way to tell if a stream is good for sand and gravel mining is to look to see if the gravel bar has little to no vegetation and consists of small, loosely packed gravel. These streams have excess gravel that allow for gravel excavation that, if done correctly, causes little to no impact to the stream. On the other hand, streams can be easily damaged by careless removal of sand and gravel. If done incorrectly, sand and gravel mining can result in rapid erosion of the stream banks, which results in the loss of land and an imbalance to the entire hydrological system. Instead of digging freely in creeks and rivers, one of the most important things is to employ methods of bar skimming. Bar skimming is when you're taking loosely packed gravel from the top of the gravel bar and being sure not to disturb the banks of the stream, the stream bed, or go anywhere near the flowing water. Two of the most common problems that inspectors encounter when they travel to in-stream sand and gravel sites are people that are mining into the banks of the stream or mining too deeply into the stream, resulting in stream bed damage. If the stream bed or banks of the stream are disturbed during mining, the stream will suffer from increased rates of erosion. When erosion speeds up, people who live along these waterways begin to see streams washing away the land they own and the streams becoming more and more shallow over time. The Land Reclamation Program recognizes the value of sand and gravel mining to Missourians and works alongside operators to ensure that the mining of sand and gravel does not result in the destruction of our treasured waterways. In contrast to sand and gravel mining, which may continue for decades in a given location, clay pits often are opened, mined, and reclaimed within five to 10 years. In Missouri, fire clays primarily are formed by collection of eroded materials in depressions created by the dissolution of limestone bedrock. Sometimes a cap of sandstone exists above the clay deposit called rim rock. Most fire clay mining in Missouri is conducted in Gasconade County and the surrounding region. Much of the fire clay in Missouri is high in alumina. High alumina clays are an important component of cement and are heat resistant. Therefore, clays are a critical building material and of use as lining in furnaces. Clay is also used as an absorbent component in cat litter and clay-bearing soil is used to make bricks. Most clay sites are less than 10 acres and are located in pastures. The most common reclaimed state is to a farm pond with grass surrounding the pond for grazing. Sometimes the pit is backfilled entirely and the site is reclaimed to a field. The most common delay in a site being reclaimed is not only erosion and sloughing, but waiting for enough rainfall to fill the pit. Vegetation establishment can be difficult on steeper slopes as well. We work well with each operator to address reclamation challenges and ensure concerns are addressed, issues are fixed, and everything is stable before releasing the site. While many resources exist to be mined, Missouri's number one mined commodity under the Land Reclamation Act is limestone. 
There are 348 limestone quarries in Missouri, making up 47% of the state's industrial mining industry. Limestone mining takes place in 83% of Missouri's counties, accounting for 76% of the state's total mining acres. Limestone is a type of sedimentary rock that makes up about 15% of the Earth's crust. Missouri contains 64 different limestone formations, including Winterset, Bethany Falls, and the Jefferson City Cotter Formation. Limestone primarily is composed of calcium carbonate, which has a great variety of applications, making it a $17.5 billion industry in Missouri. Limestone plays an important role in the Missouri economy. Limestone aggregates are used in construction, agriculture, and erosion control. Limestone even has uses in pharmaceuticals such as toothpaste. The construction industry probably is the area most people are familiar with. 80% of the concrete and 95% of the asphalt used for Missouri roads and parking lots is made up of aggregates, which are the product of crushed rock material. For example, one mile of a two-lane concrete highway requires 7,200 tons of aggregate. Your office building and the home in which you live required limestone aggregates to build. Capital Quarries Incorporated, a limestone mining company located in Jefferson City, holds permits for 19 limestone quarries in Missouri, totaling 859 permitted acres. One of Capital Quarry's sites, located in Jefferson City, is the Stadium West Quarry, consisting of 88 of their 859 permitted acres. Stadium West Quarry was first permitted by Capital Quarries in the 1980s after it was transferred from another company. Since then, Capital Quarries has reclaimed the land as they progressively mine for the combined goals of limestone production and development growth of the capital city. The Stadium Quarry was opened in 1979. At that time, the area was just a farm outside of Jefferson City, Missouri. From that time, with the quarry's help, the city has grown to encompass the site. For the past 40 years, the quarry operation has removed rock and leveled up areas so that they are suitable for development. Walmart, Sam's Club, Menards, countless others have all been constructed in these areas where we have leveled up. While removing the rock for these industrial areas, we've also produced most of the aggregate needed for many avenues of construction in this area, such as houses, commercial buildings, and aggregate for asphalt and concrete. At this site, we have 17 years of limestone reserves still in place, approximately 12 million tons. At the conclusion of mining, we'll have produced 25 million tons of aggregate and reclaimed 190 acres of land to a development land use. Limestone will continue to be a valuable part of the economic resource for years to come. We ensure the activities associated with mining are completed in a manner that aligns with the interest of Missourians, providing a sustainable environment and protecting public health and safety. Looking ahead, we are committed to protecting Missouri's mining future by striking a balance between environmental stewardship and resource extraction.